All right, so the last person in the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. All right, so first, let's talk about some myths of the Holy Spirit. So people say that they have experienced the Holy Spirit, but like catching the Holy Spirit. <laughs> some people say they're drunk in the Holy Spirit. Like Hannah, Hannah was not drunk. They look drunk, basically, in the Holy Spirit, that's the same. Um, and then, the proper way to say experiencing the Holy Spirit is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. No more, um, I caught the Holy Spirit, you don't catch the Holy Spirit. You are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. You don't, you don't be drunk in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but anyway. So basically, why we're talking about the Holy Spirit is that somebody um, came up to me when I was leaving work one time, and they were like, um, you know, there's God, the Father, and then there's um, God, a woman. And I was like, um, no, it's no woman, God. It's only God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. So that really sparked me to talk about the trinity and if you looked at my previous uh messages on who god is and who jesus is thank you thank you for watching um there's the end of it um the trinity is the last one is holy spirit and the holy spirit is basically who jesus left um with us that god allowed to descend here and be with us he is an advocate um as it says in um John 14 26 Jesus said to the disciples that the Holy Spirit is an advocate so first um, let us look at who the Holy Spirit is so the moment you pray to God to um, like the salvation prayer to receive Jesus into your life to receive to, to say that you know you believe in God and that you know Jesus came down to die for us resurrected and the, the Holy Spirit will come and live in you the moment you pray that salvation prayer however old you were the Holy Spirit lives in you since then the Holy Spirit does not depart from you the Holy Spirit is always there after you pray that salvation prayer what happens is that when we don't hear the Holy Spirit is that we feed our flesh and not our spirit how you 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 silence that well you don't silence the Holy Spirit you don't you are not in tune with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is always there inside of us but we grieve the Bible said don't grieve the Holy Spirit but you know by sinning and doing things that are not of God so how you grieve the Holy Spirit is by you want to think about of God. For example, you feed your flesh. How you feed your flesh is sin. Um, how you feed your flesh is listening to certain music that are not of God. You know how to sin. Sin is part of us since we were born. Um, since we were because of Adam, because of Eve and Adam in the garden, you know, with the apple and all that stuff. All that stuff. Um, so then Jesus came down to die for us to to remove us, you know, from that bondage of sin you know from that um, heavy burden to you know of sin so we are able to pray and ask for forgiveness we don't have to kill no animal anymore thank God we can you know pray to, pray to you know in, Je in Jesus' name for our sins to be cleansed um, and God will hear us because you know Jesus said that you know whoever prays in my name I will hear you so um, the Holy Spirit is in us it, it's indwelling in us when we are when we pray the salvation prayer we are filled with the holy spirit and also we will get baptized in the holy spirit when we get baptized as um jesus was baptized by john the baptist the dove came over him you know and that was symbolism of the holy spirit um so the holy spirit is a person you know the holy spirit is a person so Let's look at 
what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit um, has gifts and fruits of the Spirit. Yep. They're fruits. Not like, you know, apple and banana <laughs> and grapes <laughs> and mango and all that. You know, those are good fruits too. Those help us, you know, physically help us. But they are spiritual fruits of the Holy Spirit. Um, and the fruits are love, right? The Bible says that, you know, above all, love is the greatest of all, right? Joy, just being like joyful. You know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy, peace, you know, um, Bless are the peacemakers, for they are, for they shall be called children of God. The Bible says, you know, and and God left with us. Um, Jesus, when Jesus died and, and was got resurrected, he had, he saw his his disciples, you know, and he said, in John fourteen twenty seven, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So the peace that surpasses all understanding, gentleness. The Holy Spirit is very gentle. God is a gentleman. He's not forceful. You know, he doesn't go where he, he he's not welcome. He doesn't just appear, you know. That's why the Bible says that, um, you know, um, wherever two or three are guided in his name, in God's name. So wherever two or, two or three are together in God's name, he's there. So if you're together and you're not in God's name, you know, The Holy Spirit is not forceful. God is not forceful. So, He's everywhere, but if you don't, if, if you are not, um, wherever two or three are getting in His name, if you're not in His name, He's not going to make Himself known, basically. He's not going to make Himself known that he's there that's why whenever like you go to church or you meet up you know to do praise and worship or you just uh, do Bible study and you know you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and he's he's there all the time he just doesn't make his himself evident um, he is tolerant restraint basically meaning that He's able to tolerate things. Uh, kindness. The Holy Spirit is kind. Those are those are part of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Goodness. Self control. All right. So these are fruits of the Holy Spirit that gives that, that the Holy Spirit give us give us, so that we can walk like God, like Jesus was when he was on earth. Because he said he's an advocate. He's here to teach us, to remind us what Jesus Jesus talked about when he was here right he says uh in john fourteen twenty five, all i have spoken while still with you but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything i have said to you what did everything that jesus said to us the word of the lord so the holy spirit is going to remind us of all of those things so, so um and he remind us of it in love in joy in peace in gentleness, in, forbear, in forbearance, kindness, goodness, self-control, all right? And he's going to give us those gifts, those fruits to be able to, to um, walk in those as well. So, let's look at the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, remember how in First John, I mean, excuse me, in John 14, 28, this is what Jesus said. You heard me say... I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to my father. For the father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens. So that when it does happen. Um, you will believe. That's not the that's not quite what I wanted to say. Let's see.
Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> so basically, this is what I wanted to say. Um, John fourteen twenty seven. Um, no, let's go to John fourteen twelve. Sorry, it says very truly. This is Jesus speaking. It says very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to be I am going to the Father so he says that whoever believes in me will do the works I am I have been doing what is the works that Jesus has been doing a lot preaching healing um, signs and wonders a lot right all the things that he's been doing you can do it too he's saying and and they will do even greater things than these so greater things than he did if you believe in him and you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit so that is big right so let's look at the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit nine gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, you look in Joel 2 28 Acts 2 38 uh, 1st Corinthians 12 4 to 18 it all talks about the gift of the Holy Spirit so this is the personality personality and deity of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Matthew 28, 19. These are give, gifts given by grace. No merit or works to get it. This is, you don't got to work hard. You don't got to be a Christian for 100 years to get this. This is the moment you pray the salvation prayer. You ask God to come and live in your, uh, God to be the head of your life. And you allow, allow the Holy Spirit to live in you. Immediately you have that. Um, so everybody has the different gift. Um, there's some people who have the, all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, and there are some that have one or two. So God give it to you. Um, you know, basically He gives to you how you need it. Um, Sometimes you have all of it, but you're using one at a time, at a, a certain time. Uh, whenever you need to use it, it will it will be evident. Um, but some people have one, some people have two, some people have three, some people have four, some people have nine, all of it. Some people some people have different type types of it, you know, different kinds of it. But know that if the Holy Spirit is in you, you have the ability to utilize those gifts, and you will know when you are walking in those gifts. You will know. So let's look at the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. All right, first one is wisdom. First Corinthians 12, 8, it says, given in the for form of message, utterance, and word. Jesus shows the word of wisdom through um, Matthew 22, 18 to 22, um, and then John 8, 1 to 11. So how does Jesus show the, the gift of wisdom? basically he shows it by how when they ask them you know should we um, give to the church or should we give to caesar basically should we give to the to the um to the church or should we give to um the the, the leader of this nation and and jesus said give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god what belongs to god that was the gift of wisdom that's wisdom to to do that right and also, he did. He 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 shows the gift of wisdom when, when the um, the woman who committed adultery came and everybody wanted to stone her, and Jesus wrote wrote um, in the sand and he woke up and he, I mean he, he he got up and he was like, whoever um, is sinless cast the first stone, and nobody did because everybody sinned before, right? Even you and I could not cast the first stone. Um, so that's wisdom. So let's look at knowledge. Uh, wisdom is like something that like God gives. It, it surpasses your understanding. Like you, 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 things that come out of your mouth, you yourself could not have ever said it on your own. It's not. It's not your own authority. It's, it's God's authority He's giving you that ability to say things like that. Um, so gifts of wisdom is really important when you're writing a paper <laughs> for school, right? Um, or you're preaching, you know, uh, as well. Um, knowledge, gift of knowledge. 
So I guess the knowledge is like knowing something you wouldn't have known before. Um, yeah, like something that you would not have known before. Like for example, how um, like in John fourteen, in John four seventeen to eighteen, or like in James five to fourteen. You know, um, like whenever all right so for example how did jesus use the gift of knowledge you know the woman who came to the well to fetch water and jesus was like um can i get some water and the woman was like you know i'm not supposed to give you we're, we're not supposed to be conversing you know you're, you're not my people i'm not your people and jesus jesus was like go call your husband she's like i don't have any, any husband jesus, and then God, jesus was like oh you've you've had multiple husbands right that's the gift of knowledge because he didn't, like, how, how else could he have known, you know? Um, the woman didn't tell him. So God, Jesus used that, the gift of knowledge at that time to know, you know? Um, so, like, for example, when you're praying for somebody, ask God to give you uh, knowledge in what to pray for concerning the person. Like, when when you're praying for somebody, especially, like, uh, a church or if you're part of the prayer team or you know allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and what to pray for the person because honestly most of the time when I pray for somebody I don't I, I, I rarely ask them what to pray for I just allow the Holy Spirit to to lead me and it it actually moves them more when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead them than when you ask them because when you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you he will lead you the right way like what they're in need of and you see them crying and in tears and like oh my god the lord heard my prayer you know so the holy spirit can do more than we can do so let the holy spirit lead you in knowledge and wisdom how to how to do that the next one is faith so faith first corinthians 12 9 to 10 so that's the type of faith like that is just like huge beyond the mustard seed of faith like it's big even the mustard seed of faith can move mountains right so faith is like believing you know oh like how, how when jesus um killed when, when the man who um came to jesus and said my, my child is sick you know my child is dying and jesus said and and then and the, um the man said you know just 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 tell you know pray right now that my child will wake up and you know we'll be okay and Jesus was like, whoa, wow, that's a, that's a huge faith that I don't, I'm not even there physically with your child. And you want me to pray here while your child is all the way over there? Wow. And Jesus was taken aback with that. He's like, that's amazing faith you have. And he said, your, your faith has healed your child, right? So that kind of faith, that kind of faith that's like, I don't know how I'm going to pay all this $20,000 bill, but I know God's going to come through. Not fake faith like real faith you know um healing mark 16 17 to 18 basically jesus did a lot of healing he healed the sick he healed the dead he healed the lepers he healed a lot of people he removed demons from people he did so much healing right so um look in mark 16 17 to 18 you can have the healing too there are miracles like when you're looking about um in in the um on well you just have to be careful what kind of preachers healing are there that you're looking at you know the bible says you can know you know them you know them by their fruit you know so what kind of fruit do they have fruit of the spirit we just talked about that love joy peace gentleness you know so um just test every spirit Test every spirit. So if you if you see somebody performing miracles on YouTube and going to places and healing the sick and all that stuff, just ask you know, ask God. Is this really 